in the name of the one true God, the cosmic benefactor who is kind. Kaf, Ha, Ya, Ein, Sod. What follows is a commemoration of your divine Lord's courtesy to his devoted servant Zechariah. It so happened that he prayed to his divine Lord in private, saying, Lord of mine, my bones are getting weak, and my head shines with grey hair, yet I have no reticence in this calling of yours, my Lord. I do fear for my clan members after I am gone, since my wife is barren. Do grant me then, from yourself, a trusted partner. A person who can be a successor to me and to the family of Jacob. Make him, my Lord, an amiable person. God answered, Dear Zechariah, we offer you glad tidings of a young man named John, a name we have not chosen before. He asked, My Lord, how can there be a young man from me when my wife lacks fertility and old age has made me decrepit? He replied, So will it be. Then your divine Lord said, Easy is that for me. After all, I created you before when you were non-existent. Zechariah said, My Lord, assign then for me a directive. His divine Lord responded, your directive is that you shall for three nights not communicate with people in the normal way. And so, Zechariah exited from the chamber upon his people and commenced communicating with them without speaking. This, so they could continue their praise singing to God, morning and evening. Dear John, become a fervent adopter of the code. To John, we gave wisdom since childhood already. We filled him with compassion and moral refinement by our grace, and he became a man of discretion. Courteous was he to his parents, never overbearing or obstinate. Serenity surrounds him the day he was born, the day he dies, and the day he is brought back to life. Make mention of Mary, named in the Christian scripture. The time she relocated away from her family to an easterly location. She chose to be secluded from them. Then we sent her our spirit, who appeared to her as a perfectly formed human. She exclaimed, I seek refuge from the cosmic benefactor from you, if you could please consider well. He replied, All I am is a messenger from your divine Lord, coming to gift you with a refined young man. She asked, How can I have a son when no man has been with me legitimately? nor have I been promiscuous. He responded, So shall it be, for your divine Lord says, Easy is it for me. We shall make him a beacon for humanity and a courtesy from us. It is a matter already decided. So she conceived and carried him and secluded herself with him at a remote place. The pain at the time of delivering the child drove her to the base of a palm tree, where she cried, How I wish I had died before this, gone and forgotten. From beneath her he cried to her, Grieve not, your divine Lord has placed a stream beneath you. Jerk the trunk of the palm tree towards you, and it will drop upon you fresh ripe dates. Eat, drink, and find comfort then. If you see any human, say, I have vowed silence to the cosmic benefactor, so I will not speak to any person today. Upon her return to her people carrying the child, they exclaimed, Mary, you have committed a grave act. Dear sister of the Aaron clan, your father was not a man of disgrace, nor was your mother an immoral woman. When she referred them to the child, they asked, How can we speak to a child in the cradle? The child spoke and said, I am the servant of God. He gave me the scripture and appointed me as a prophet. He made me fortunate wherever I may be and enjoined observance and refinement on me for as long as I live. As well as to honor my mother, he made me neither bombastic nor reticent. Serenity surrounds me the day I was born, the day I will die, and the day I will be brought back to life. That then is who Jesus, the son of Mary is. The true version which they are skeptical about. 
It is not becoming of God to father a child. Far beyond that is he. When he decrees a matter, all he does is to utter, be, and it becomes. God is the one who sustains both me and you, so be devoted to him. That is what constitutes the right path. But the various sects fell into dispute. Let those who obscure the truth beware of that ultimate day, though, when it shall all become apparent. Perfect hearing and perfect vision shall they have, the day they come back to us. The wicked shall that day be hopelessly lost. Warn them of the day of regret, when the command shall be fulfilled. Warn them now, in the midst of their state of oblivion, refusing to accept the message. It is we who shall come into final possession of the earth, and all on it. To us, therefore, shall they return. Make mention also of Abraham, who appears in the previous scripture, a truth-teller and a prophet. When he said to his father, My dear father, why do you worship something that can neither hear nor see, and nor benefit you in any way? My dear father, I have come upon knowledge unknown to you, Follow what I say so I can show you the correct way. My dear father, stop devoting yourself to the devil. The devil is in rebellion against the cosmic benefactor. My dear father, I fear that retribution from the cosmic benefactor shall befall you and that you shall be counted as a friend of the devil. He replied, Are you renouncing my gods, Abraham? If you do not end this, I will stone you. Stay away from me permanently. He responded, Peace be upon you. I will ask forgiveness for you from my divine Lord, for he always obliges me. I distance myself from you and from that which you invoke beside the one true God. Instead, I invoke my divine Lord. Hopefully, in executing my Lord's calling, I shall feel no reticence. When he had distanced himself from them and from what they worship besides God, we gave him Isaac and Jacob. Each we made a prophet. We showered them with our kindness and gave them superiority in articulating truth. Make mention also of Moses, who appears in the previous scripture. A man of distinction who became a messenger and prophet. We called him from the right slope of the mount and drew him near unto us in mystic communion. As a courtesy, we gifted to him his brother Aaron as a prophet. Also make mention of Ishmael, who appears in the previous scripture, a man who remained faithful to his promise and another messenger prophet. He used to order his people with observance of the code and with moral refinement. Endearing was he to his divine Lord. Make mention also of Enoch, appearing in the previous scripture, a man of integrity and a prophet. To a supreme level did we elevate him. These are some of those whom God blessed, belonging to the ranks of the prophets, the descendants of Adam and those we carried with Noah, and from the offspring of Abraham and Israel, and from those we guided and selected. When the verses of the cosmic benefactor were read to them, they would fall down in submission, weeping. But then, after them, there came a generation who abandoned observance, and instead followed their every desire. A generation that shall yet meet with doom. Except those who repent, believe and act righteously, they shall enter paradise not being wronged in the least. Gardens of felicity, which the cosmic benefactor promised his devotees in the world beyond. And what he promises happens inevitably. No obscene talk will they sense there. Only peace. Their sustenance there received morning and evening. Such shall be the paradise that we shall bestow on our devotees, who acted with discretion. We angels and spirits surface only when your Lord so instructs. To him belongs what is ahead of us, behind us, and in between, and your Lord never forgets. Lord and sustainer of heavens and earth and whatever exists in between. Be therefore devoted to him, and remain steadfast in devotion to him. Do you then know any contender to him? The errant man asks, 
After I die, shall I be brought back to life? Does the errant man not recall that we created him initially, out of nothing? As true as is your divine Lord, we shall most certainly summon them all together with the satanic forces, and then we shall most certainly gather them, on their knees, around hell. Then shall we bring out from each sect those who were most defiant towards the cosmic benefactor. Then shall we ascertain who most deserves to suffer, the fire of hell. Every one of you shall encounter it. It is a decree deemed immutable by your divine Lord. Then we shall save those who practice discretion and leave the wicked kneeling in there. When our evidence which explains things is rendered to them, those who obscure it say to those who affirm it, between us and you, which of the two parties is in a stronger position on earth and more superior as a community? Yet how many nations before theirs have we not wiped out? Societies that were better equipped and more dazzling. Tell them, the cosmic benefactor prolongs the time of those who are misguided. Until they witness what they were warned of, either damnation or the zero hour. Then shall they really know who was in a weaker position and whose forces were fewer. God deepens those who found the way in guidance. Consistent positive practices are preferable to your divine Lord, both in gaining a divine reward and in reaping the benefit from it. Consider for a moment he who denies our evidence, claiming, Money and children are things that are guaranteed for me. Did he then penetrate the unknown future? Or perhaps the cosmic benefactor made him a promise, which is not the case. All that he speaks, we shall record and then extend his sentence for him, because of such talk. That which he claims are guaranteed to him, we shall inherit in any case, then shall he meet with us alone. Is their adoption of objects of veneration, additional to God, for the purpose of them gaining status from it? On the contrary, those very objects will disavow the veneration that was made of them while opposing those who worshipped them. Can you not see how we send demons upon the truth obscurers, whipping up hatred and anger in them? Do not therefore be in haste over them. We are surely counting down their days. That day when we shall assemble as a company, those who practice discretion with the cosmic benefactor, while herding the depraved to hellfire in thirst. None shall possess any right of mediation, except those given this right by the cosmic benefactor. They claim, the cosmic benefactor fathered a son. Abominable is this claim of yours. A claim so vile, the heavens are ready to crack open, the earth to rupture, and the mountains to crumble to rubble, that they should ascribe to the benefactor of the cosmos, a son. Unbefitting is it for the cosmic benefactor to father a child. Of all beings throughout heavens and earth, not a single one appears before the cosmic benefactor as anything but a mere functionary. He tabulated and made a careful count of them. All of them shall come to him singularly on Resurrection Day. On those who endorsed truth and acted righteously, the cosmic benefactor shall bestow endearment. It is but we who simplified the message in your own language, so you can put at ease those who practice discretion and caution people who oppose vehemently. How many nations before theirs have we not wiped out? Can you sense anything from them, or hear a whisper from them now?